lights out here in Moto2 in 2022. It's a great start for Paul this one of the 13. Chelsea Silvietti, Jake Dixon got away really good as well. A 96 bike from the second row. Likewise, his teammate Albert Galenas on the gas gas machine. It looks like it will be Dayton Dixon around the outside of Chelsea Silvietti in the first corner. Dixon leads. There's contact there twice on the run down to the first game between Acosta and Chantra as Lopez gets busy on the inside of Augusto Fernandez. Chelsea Silvietti is in that danger zone. There's a crash in the back. Yeah, there was a bit of drama further back. I think that might be Cubo. Certainly one of the riders is involved. Nobody went down, but there was contact that put two riders in this game. Oh, that's oh, Jake, that's aggressive. He picks up world champion leader Augusto Fernandez on that tricky breaking zone. Uphill into turn three. That's cost Augusto Fernandez. Crucial places and a lot of time. In fact, Augusto has come through and Vietti might do as well. A girl and leads. Chantra on the podium places in third. Sam is in between those oh, two. Is three. Lopez has gone for it. Now then, for the third race in succession, then, after leading at the Dutch TT in Assen, he left for so, so long, didn't he, at the British Grand Prix in Silverstone. This is now three race on the hit the front. He leads on laps. I wonder whether Agora made a mistake coming through turns seven and eight. He had a lead in nearly half a second. And Chantra, as Lopez gets busy up the inside of Augusto Fernandez. Chelsea and Yeti is in that danger zone. Oh. And there's a crash at the back. Yeah, there was a bit of drama further back. I think that might be Cubo, certainly one of the riders that's involved. Nobody went down but there was contact that put two riders in this game road. That's Jay Dix, that's aggressive. He takes up world championship leader Augusto Fernandez on that tricky breaking zone. For the Americans, a girl that tries to get some instant payback on Vietti with some slipstream in the first corner. And it's now a game with there on the brakes. It's a game that's won by Ayo Gura, just using some good drive there out the final corner. Both Vietti and the girl. Fernandez can't find a way through. He wants a piece of this battle though. Does he the Spanish rider? Can he attack Agura on the brakes? A girl is no way through, but what a battle this is. A classic encounter between the top two men in the Moto2 World Championship so far this year. They've been the creme de la creme at the top of the pile. Vietti versus Agura here. Titanic does this one. Vietti not able to go with the Aspar Dua. Here's the second round then between Schrotter and Agura. Schrotter looks like he's made it a bit cleaner that time. Agura not in the position this time to respond as they go to Relenda. Potentially putting a lot more points on the board here today as Connect closes right to the red tyre of Chelsea Nobietti in this snaking first sector and he's got that move done, beautifully done by Connect. Vietti tries to fight back up through turn number nine. Awesome stuff, this spectacular stuff between the top two men in the Moto2 World Championship this year. Arbolino once again has got back through on Bovier for third. And that move started three or four corners further back. Vietti got ever so slightly wide going through those s pens at the start of the lap. And of course puts him off his rhythm and Canik was able to just line him up to make the move. It's important now to see whether Vietti can go with Canik. Canik's looked at the pace right throughout this weekend. All he's been missing is a grip position. He got it this weekend. Can he now pull away at the front? Joe Roberts having a bit of a nightmare weekend. He's 22nd. Multiple minor three race for Nicola Antelli also behind Adjius. What a ride by the Aussie so far. It's been a difficult start to this one three as well. Four being in the South Trans team because Dallaport has gone down four places to 14 on the first lap of the Grand Prix. Fastest lap of the race though to the rookie, Pedro Acosta. Despite Chelsea and Vietti swarming over the back of him, the rookie is the fastest man on track. And when Agura passed him for the lead, this time around, he slips off the podium places. Now it's Vietti who comes through. He's been pressurising Lopez into that mistake. It's an easy mistake to make in such an aggressive breaking zone for that turn four. But Vietti then finally gets himself up into P3. To use that different line, he can run the Bosca score, it maybe, to fight back through on the brakes down into turn number nine. It's Vietti Trotter now. Is he close enough to attack? Here comes Vietti. He's leaving that late. It's a late, late shot on the brakes for Vietti to turn number 10. He got Dixon for second on the previous lap. He now takes over the front here. Beautifully done by Vietti on the inside of Canetti, I mean, his preferred overtaking marker in this battle. And Vietti now leads. This could be a big, big 25 points in terms of the World Championship because with Aya Gura struggling down in eighth, he has just been picked up by Sam Lowe's. Agura could drop 17 points here going to round 10 in Germany. Connect trying to pick up some slipstream as they come on the line. Five laps to go here then. Is he attacking Agura now into turn seven? He yes. bet he is, and he's making it through. What a battle this is then between the two top men in the Moto 2 World Championship this year. Fernandez We've already tasted one. glory, haven't they, so far? Both Vietti and Nagura. Fernandez can't find a way through. He wants a piece of this battle, though. Does he, the Spanish rider? Can he attack Agura on the brakes into turn 10? Agura, there's no way through, but what a battle this is. A classic encounter between the top two men in the Moto 2 World Championship so far this year. They've been the creme of the creme at the top of the pile. Vietti.
versus Agura here. By Tammy Tuttle, this one. Yeti not able to go with the Aspar Duo. Here's the second round then between Schrotter and Agura. Schrotter looks like he's made it a bit cleaner that time. Agura not in the position this time to respond as they go through 11. Well, Schrotter's move was clean. It was Agura that whacked into him, <laughs> wasn't it, on that previous lap? He's had some uh, oh. time It looks like he's got rubber trouble here, doesn't it, to Agura? Maybe already hitting some major, major rear grip problems with that Dunlop rear tyre, it's extremely hot. He's trying to find a way back through. He's got some slipstream. Who's going to be latest on the brakes into turn one? It will be Kinect. He's back in the front. Well, Vietti was able to break ever so slightly later, but he couldn't turn in. Uh, he's oh, now trying to go back on the inside. That's a brave, brave move. It's still Kinect on course for his first win in this Grand Prix as well. He's retired. I wonder if something happened between him and some of Here comes Vietti. That's been where he's been so, so good on the front end of that Calix machine. And again, now Kinect becomes his latest victim. Now then, Vietti, as he ties it to perfection, how close was that between Fernandez and and Dixon as they were a full lean angle through turn number 12? So it's Vietti versus Kinect, still firmly in victory contention. Vietti will sweep through the final penultimate lap. 4.6 kilometers to go here. The Monster Energy Grand Prix, and it's advantage to the World Championship leader, Celestino Vietti. You feel the moves going to come now for Kinect because we know how good Vietti is into turns. And Kinect does get up the inside. Vietti won't be able to turn in from there. Kinect put himself in just the right position to force Vietti to give up the lead. Kinect leads at the start of the... So, Kinect knows exactly. Great job oh. by Kevin. There goes a little bit hot. Kinect going the fraction hot. The door was open and Vietti does come through. Kinect is trying to find a way back through. He's got some slipstream. Who's going to be latest on the break? Big Kinect. He's back at the front. Well, Vietti was able to break ever so slightly later, but he couldn't turn in. Oh, he's down trying to go off. back on the inside. That's a brave, brave move. Well, here comes Vietti. He's a late heartbreak here for Kinect. As he timed it to perfection, how close was that between? Great job oh. by Kevin. There goes a little bit hot. Kinect got in the fraction hot. The door was open and Vietti does come through. He's a late heartbreak here for Kinect. It does get up the inside. Vietti won't be able to turn in from there. Kinect put himself in just the right position to force Vietti to give up the lead. Kinect leads up the slightly like later, but he couldn't turn in. Uh, he's down, tries to go back on the inside. That's a brave, brave move. It's still Kinect on course for his first win as a Moto2 rider. Albert Arenas, well, he has ended his hopes of a top six and in this Grand Prix as well. Where he's been so, so good on the front end of that Galax machine. And again, now Kinect becomes his latest victim. Now then, Vietti, has he timed it to perfection? How close was that between Fernandez and Ronald Dixon as they were a full lead angle through turn number 12? So it's Vietti versus Kinect. Don't rule out Dixon and Fernandez. They're still firmly in victory contention. Static, very, very shortly. Likewise, the brilliant Aaron Kinect, you see there, Hiroshi Ayama, he can't celebrate yet, he's got everything crossed as his man tries to resist and keep... It's going to come down to turn 16 for Augusto Fernandes, he's having a look, he's going to follow Ayagura through these three right-handers, 15 coming up, we've seen him make moves there in the past, can he get his way through there, he's having a look at the inside, he does go through. Sector 3, there's a yellow flag out, in that Sector 3, Augusto Fernandes has been brilliant throughout this Grand Prix. A harder rear tyre option, it's probably going to be too late for him to close in the top two, he's got 4.4 seconds of empty tarmac ahead of him, but he does have an ace of his sleeve in this battle. Lowe's looking to attack down the main street. He's in the slipstream now of the number 79. Is he going to have a go at the inside? It looks like he is. Lowe's draws alongside I And Agura, he's been so, so good on the brakes on the front end into the first corner. He is again now and finds a way through. So Agura sees his back that third place. He's been there a few times already in this Grand Prix. You tangle right at the very first corner. He's in a pretty lonesome 13th place right now, as Lewis mentioned. He knows that Ayagura looking so, so good in third place. He's obviously thinking, well, if Sam Lowe's has got nothing for him, I need to pick up the baton here, get through on Lowe's, and now set about finding a way through on Ayagura, which is not going to be the easiest puzzle to solve, although he's going for it straight away, is he here? Into turn 15, no, Agura keeps the door shut. Celestino Vietti, what a dominant start of 2022 has been for him. You can see there his Mooney VR46 crew in the top left-hand corner of your screen. They're going to be ecstatic very, very shortly. Likewise, the brilliant Aaron Kinect. You can see there Hiroshi Ayama. He can't celebrate yet. He's got everything crossed as his man tries to resist. I think he's going to come down to turn 16. Hey, look, he's going to follow Ayagura through these three right-handers. 15 coming up. We've seen him make moves there in the past. Can he get his way through there? He's having a look at the inside. He does go through. Sector three, the Digelo. Late, late drama here in Moto2 on the final lap. Celestino Bietti. One corner left for him then. The Italian on course. We get another victory here in 2022. I don't think it has to be close.
stuff. It's going to be a run down to the finish line. It's going to be victory for Vietti in a Moto2 Classic here. Celestin of Vietti takes it by just eight hundredths of a second. The move on the last lap. Marcel Schrotter takes fifth. Let's enjoy a well-deserved lap of honour. Let's take a look at the final ranking of this Moto2 race. Park Ferme with the live coverage where the three podium finishes have just arrived. The winner is over the moon and is rightly indulging in celebrations with his team members.